I describe you? I was saying, you know, entrepreneur, Dallas, Dallas Mavericks owner, Shark Tank star. You do it Just, all, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, but entrepreneur, that, that works. You know, it, you and I were talking earlier today on one of the panels, and you made some really fascinating points about innovation right now in this country um, and, and, and all that needs to be done to encourage it, to encourage small businesses. What do you think um, overall is the most important thing for, for new entrepreneurs right now? Just to go after it. I mean, the thing about being an entrepreneur is there's, it's just all to you. You know, a lot of people like to make excuses. I don't have connections. I don't have money. I don't have this. But, you know, if, if you find something that you like to do or love to do, be great at it and see if you can turn it into a business. And worst case, you're going to have fun doing what it is you love to do. And best case, you can turn it into a business. I, I'm just not big on excuses. I just think if you really, you, everybody has that opportunity to go for it. They just got to do it. Well, you know, a lot of people say it's hard to get a loan right now if you're a small business owner or you're starting to come up, you're trying to come up with an idea. How do you get the capital to, to start that business? Well, first of all, if you're starting a business and you take out a loan, you're a moron. <laughs> right, because you're, it, there's so many uncertainties involved with starting a business, uh -huh. yet the one certainty that you'll have to have is paying back your loan. And the bank doesn't care about your business or whoever you borrow from unless it's family doesn't care about your business. You know, and so it's just a, a complete conflict. So, to, so what, never, what, what's your small business uh, entrepreneur? 99% of small businesses you can start with next to no capital. It's more about effort. You know, small businesses don't fail for lack of capital. They fail for lack of brains. They fail for lack of effort. Most people just aren't willing to put in the time to work smart. I mean, they, they, they go for it in a lot of cases, but they just don't recognize how much work's involved. And, and, and if you do the preparation, if you know, if you start a business, you better know your, your industry and your company better than anyone in the whole wide world because you're competing. And to think that whoever it is you're competing with is just going to let you come in and take their business, obviously that's naive. And I think most people don't recognize that. If you're going to compete with me and one of my businesses, you better realize that I'm working 24 hours a day to kick your ass. You know, a lot of companies right now are holding on to their money, they're holding on to cash. Maybe they're doing some uh, share buyback, right. uh, but in general, they're not putting their capital to work right now. How and when does that start to change? I mean, it's a reflection of a lot of different things. If if they're buying back shares, it means they don't see anything in their own businesses that they can invest in. And if they don't see anything in their own businesses that they can invest in, then it doesn't matter if they're bringing back capital from elsewhere, and it doesn't matter that they can talk all they want about jobs, but there's no good reason you know, th th to hire people because they don't have places to put capital to work. And I think that's also a reflection of the focus on Wall Street, you know, most of the times when we talk about putting capital to use, we talk about public companies. You don't really see this as an issue in private companies. Um, but with public companies, they, they get such a concern with shareholder value and shareholder returns that they lose sight of, of trying to move the ball and to innovate and to invest in R&D. And I think that's hurt our economy, and I think that hurts the, the company in the long term. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean for growth? Do you think we're going to be in this 2.5%, 2% environment for a while? Yeah, and, but I'm I'm not, I don't look at that and say, see, there's something wrong. We're not doing something right. I look at that and say, that's the new normal. That, mm -hmm. you know, when companies have their backs against the wall, particularly small to medium, where there's a big um, part of the growth for jobs, mm -hmm. we, we find new ways to innovate. We're, we're innovators in this country. We don't just sit back and say the only way we can solve problems is by hiring people. Mm -hmm. We go out there and you hire smarter kids. You hire smarter people to write software, to put things in the cloud, to, to um, find new solutions. And so we're, we're turning into an economy that is bifurcated. There's those people who write and control and define the software, mm -hmm. and then there's those people who work for the software. Well, you're someone who's gone out and started a lot of businesses, including your own network. CBS has just uh, purchased a minority sure. stake in your network. What, what do you think, what is their intention uh, to do with that? Do you think there's a chance they might buy out the whole thing? Who knows? Um, but I think they're recognizing that, you know, the reason we took a network, HDNet, which was the first all high definition TV network, grew it, um, and then two years ago I recognized that being HD it obviously is not enough. And so I said, out there in the media landscape, what opportunities are there? What, what creates a unique scenario that would be good for a network? And if you look at what's happening with social media, in particular real-time social media, it's very obvious, and you guys know it as well as anybody, real-time social media drives real-time viewing on TV, and live events on TV drive social media. It's a very symbiotic relationship. And so with Access TV, we had been doing live events as HD 
safety net, and we just amplified that. So, we, you know, from concerts all over the globe to live interview shows to live, you know, fights, whatever type of event that we can do live. We live want to do is it. what people will tune in for. Live is what mm -hmm. differentiates um, television from the internet. You know, the internet was designed for everything but video, and television designed specifically for, to deliver video, and, and that's a huge difference. And how does the internet? Fit? I mean, when you think about content now being so much on demand, live obviously different because you have to tune in specifically for an event. Right. But you know, when Gangnam Style video, right? A billion people watch it. You couldn't find any two people who watched it and talked about it at the same time. It's just completely different. By the time you watch it on YouTube, you've already missed it. You know, you've missed the conversation. YouTube's not about conversation. On demand is not about conversation. It's about catching up. It's about killing time and, and vegetating, watching a show all day long. Whereas watching this live, hopefully there's people online talking about, are Cubans an idiot, are Cubans smart, or whatever. <laughs> Trish knows her stuff, or you know, whatever it may be. But that's a that's you know a holistic conversation that happens in real time that drives that creates a unique experience.